Hey everybody, I'm back for the next video. This is going to be my top 10 favorite fiction books that I've read in 2017. Again, I tried to make a list. I changed my mind at the last second and moved some around, but this is going to go from number 10 to number one, just like my nonfiction reads. Number 10 on my list is Lincoln in the Bardo, just because of how creative and imaginative it was and how different it was. It wasn't perfect to me, but it really was emotionally intense. I love the experience of listening to it on audiobook while I was reading and I really felt like that added so much. I just really loved the voices of the ghosts and how they came through in this book and just a book that is unlike anything I've ever read before. Number nine on my list is Salvage the Bones by Jasmine Ward. This is a book that took me a bit to get through just because of library issues but one that I really really enjoyed the characters and if you are a character person you should read this book. The characters don't really change that much in this book. It is kind of a snapshot sort of book but I felt like I really knew each of them in that moment and it's just a story about a girl not really feeling loved or understood by those around her. The writing I think is the most special thing about this book. And it's one of those books that because of Jasmine Ward's writing you feel like you are literally there smelling, eating, tasting, feeling everything that the characters are doing. So a really really great book to get you in the setting and mindset of the characters in an area that was facing Hurricane Katrina. Number eight on my list is a poetry collection and I know it should probably go in my other video but I'm gonna put it in fiction. <laughs> what the Heart Knows by Joyce Sidman. It was the only poetry this year that I felt deserved to be on any of these lists just because of the simplicity but also the impact that it had on me. It also had really beautiful illustrations and I think it's worth just picking up to look at the illustrations but if you want something to kind of pick you up to make you feel better this is poetry that I feel really did that and if you feel like you can't really get into poetry I think this is a great option too because it is tailored for younger readers but I really connected to it and I felt like a lot of the poems spoke to me. Number seven on my list is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Oseki. A very, not dense, but very big in scope kind of book that follows two different characters and how they are connected by something that is found in the ocean. And for me, like Salvage the Bones, this book was about characters, particularly now. Ruth was an interesting character to me and was necessary to tie things together, but I loved Now's narration and I found her really spunky and entertaining and just thoughtful, a thoughtful character. It's a book that also ponders lots of different themes, so if you like something wide in scope in that sense as well, I think that you would like this. If you like thinking about time and death and the meaning of life, I felt like this book really did a lot of those things. The next book on my list, number six, is The Female of the Species. This is kind of a, a YA book that stuck its way in here just because of its subtlety, I think. It's a book that deals with feminist messages and feminist themes, thinking about rape culture and what it means for girls to live in the world today. I just loved the voices that came through the way that Alex, the main character, looked at the world. She is very aggressive and I think that it really fits her character, but there are also other narrators in the book and they give alternate ideas of how they look at the world. And I just really loved how it took down so many ideas about rape culture that I feel like a lot of YA attempts to do, but I felt like Mindy McGinnis did it so well because I wasn't hit over the head with these morals. And she just laid it out in a way that for me felt so believable. Number five for me was The Circuit. I really loved this book because I really connected to it. And it is semi-autobiographical, so that's probably some reasons why I connected to it but it's really about the immigrant experience and I didn't think I would connect with it because it deals with a boy in the 50s but I felt like a lot of the little stories in the book I went through myself when I moved here multiple times reading it I think like three or four times I was like literally that same thing happened to me when I moved here so I love the circuit for the way that it spoke about the immigrant experience and kind of the trials and tribulations that a lot of our families face and and the mindset that immigrant families have when they move here. Number four on my list is The Story of a New Name by Elena Ferrante. This is the only Ferrante I read this year. I have the third book out from the library right now, but I wanted to include this book in here because of how deeply it touched me and how sad and heartbroken I felt after I read it. I want these two friends to 
be friends and I feel like it's so difficult in the world that they live in for them to do that. And also I love this book for its cast of characters and how they all are so interconnected and what one character does really affects everybody. I love the setting and the time period and I love how Ferrante writes these books. She is so simple and quiet in her delivery but the way that she writes always hits me in the gut and it makes me feel like I understand where everybody's coming from and I just wish everybody could sit around and just talk it out and be friends. So it's just a lovely, lovely book about a friendship that is difficult. Number three on my list is a book that I thought I would like, but not as much as I ended up liking it. And that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is the only book that was published pre-90s or so that I read this year. And it was a book that I love. I think it's because it's so suspenseful and because the main character is so relatable in weird ways. I just love how it was written. It had really thrilling and exciting twists that I did not expect and I didn't think I would get that from a book published in the 30s so that was really a big surprise for me. I also just loved how each character had a point to them and even there are pretty unlikable characters in this book or characters where you're like why are you acting like that but once you hear their side you kind of understand why they're acting like that. I loved it for its self-awareness, I loved it for its characters and I loved it for the mysterious and suspenseful twist that it had and it's one that I really really loved on audiobook as well. Number two on my list is a book that I mention all the time on my channel so it's probably no surprise that it's here but it's The Vegetarian by Han Kong. It's a polarizing book and I get that and actually the last two books on my list are pretty polarizing I feel like and their ratings on Goodreads are not very high. Take both of these recommendations with a grain of salt. They are my favorite books but I understand where other people are coming from. So number two, The Vegetarian is just one that I keep coming back to and I keep thinking about and one that I keep comparing to other things. I feel like that really speaks to my reading experience with it and I truly am grateful that I read it with other people and that I got to hear things about South Korea and their cultural perceptions and how they view different things and I loved its take on a woman's place in that society also mental illness and how we deal with that and how we try to box women into having these specific roles without realizing that they're going through something and instead of helping them we're trying to mold them to be what we want them to be and that's what I really took away from that book and why I loved it I also thought that parts of it were really messed up in a way that I found exciting to read even though that sounds really like gross and bad but there were parts in this book where I stayed up all night because I wanted to know what happened and that's not something that usually happens to me. This book was one that I really wanted to keep reading. It had a great message I felt like and it also had great writing and translating thanks to Deborah Smith so I really really loved The Vegetarian. I just realized the only book on this list that's five stars is probably Rebecca. So yeah, it doesn't mean that these books are perfect to me, but I'm a little bit more picky when it comes to fiction, I think. But number one on my list is another one that's very polarizing and that I feel like not a lot of people like, but that's okay. I'm fine with that. I can be alone in this, but I love The Girls by Emma Klein. And honestly, I don't know what it is about it because I do understand that it's not perfect and I didn't rate it five stars either, but I keep coming back to it and I keep thinking about it. For me, it hits a lot of boxes that make a book a favorite. Number one, it's a coming of age story. I really, really enjoy seeing girls grow from a beginning to an end in a book. Number two, it has unlikable characters and characters that make bad decisions and characters that feel misunderstood. Number three, it's set in the 60s and it's set in a cult and the main character is surrounded by people who are not good for her and that makes interesting things happen in the book, in the plot. And number four, it really spoke about a girl's experience, what it means to become a teenage girl in a way that I find even difficult to see in nonfiction. And I felt Emma Klein, in the way that she wrote the main character, expressed how I felt growing up as a teenage girl here and the ways that we are expected to behave, the ways that we are looked at and automatically judged, in the ways that we are picked apart in our body parts and the way that we look. And I really don't know if it's the right book for you, but if any of the things that I mentioned 
mentioned sound like something that is interesting to you, I would say give it a try. For me, it was one of the books that after I read it, I felt like I was in a daze. So I did really enjoy The Girls by Emma Klein and I am excited to see what else Emma Klein comes out with. That is it for me and my top 10 favorite fiction books of 2017. If you read any of these, let me know in the comments or if you would like to read any of these, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.